Hello everyone, welcome back to Classic Automotive Services. Unfortunately we didn't get a chance to do a video last week as we were actually up north um, at a family wedding. Um, but we're back this week and we'll start where we left off with the Bristol. So what did we find with the Bristol? Well, we found good news and bad news. Um, the good news, we'll start with first, um, when we started stripping the top end of the engine down, uh, we noticed that it had all been modified and quite heavily tuned. Um, it's got a Elderbrock 650 um, four barrel carburetor on it. It's then got an Elderbrock uh, Performance RPM inlet manifold. And to go along with that, it's also got Elderbrock Performer RPM cylinder heads, which it's going to make it so it's got a lot more power, which is, that's unfortunately where the good news stops. Um, as soon as we've got the inlet manifold off, um, we noticed that we got um, a number of bent push rods. Uh, one of the push rods had actually punched its way through the rocker arm, and we've got four quite badly bent inlet valves. So, yeah, it was quite a, it let go quite badly, unfortunately. Um, but we have now got the parts from America for it. We had to go directly from direct to America for them. So in the box here, we've got a complete new set of push rods, got some rocker arms, we've got new inlet valves. The cylinder heads actually had the wrong bolts in them. Um, it had standard bolts in it. With these heads, it should have um, aftermarket bolts to suit the heads. So we've got ARP head bolts for it. And to top it all off, we decided to go for a Elderbrock um, air filter as well. So we've got all the parts for that, so I can start getting that back together um, shortly um, once I've got the purple stag finished, which we'll go on to in a minute. Uh, here's the cylinder heads. So we've had them skimmed. Um, they only need eight thou taken off of them, um, which is great. Um, obviously, we had the same amount taken off both heads. Um, to keep the compressions the same. Uh, going on to the valves, if I turn that on the camera, you can see that is just one of the four that was majorly bent. Uh, there's one of the push rods that was bent quite badly, and it went straight through. And if you come around. It actually went straight through that rocker so yeah it let go quite spectacularly um it's, it's all fixable and it will run absolutely lovely again once we get it sorted so especially now we've got all the parts for it so we can crack on with that um like i said once we get the purple stag done which is what we're going to go for next right the purple stag it is very very nearly complete now um we should have it finished beginning part of next week so i'm aiming for sort of midweek and to have it finished and then i've got to do a shakedown run on it and do some miles in it and then get it all cleaned up washed polished valeted so it's all spick and span ready to go um hopefully so the customer can have it back next weekend um that's what i'm aiming for anyway and he's the customer's actually um gonna take it to a couple of shows um in July so it's really good timing but we'll show you inside the car as we've got 90% of the interior back in now so we've got all the brand new carpets in door cards are back on I'm just finishing off the door cards um, all the back seat is all back in and we've refitted all the we've fitted new seat belts to it in the back so because you only wanted some lap belts in it for his grandkids so We've got that sorted out and we've got the boot all trimmed out as well. So the boots on the stags are very, very nice when they're trimmed out correctly. So you've got all brand new carpets all fit into the boot. Everything's working, got a nice new electric aerial as well. So we've just got a few odds and ends to finish up on it. And then we've got to fit the extras that the customers asked us to fit to it. He wants some um, different horns and that putting on it and just a few personal touches doing on it um, and we've got to change the viscous coupling as the viscous coupling is actually locked up um, so we've got the new viscous coupling for that 
so yeah very very close to being finished um and hopefully the weather holds out um for the rest of the week so i can actually um put some miles on it and um road test it for him so we now go on to the tr8s so last week i actually got a chance to get on this and get this um pretty much stripped um engine bay is completely gutted now obviously no, there's no bumpers i'll just strip it to a shell um the last things to come out of this are I've got to strip the doors uh take the glass out dash out and then pull the wire and limb out um go around it and then unrivet clips and brackets that sort of thing so that's then as far as i'm going to take it um i want to keep it on its wheels temporarily um so i can do the little bits of welding that I need to do on, on it as i've got to change the roof skin over um as we mentioned before um the only other bits i've really found is i've got to do a couple of repairs on the flange um on the bolt scut scuttle here and here just a couple of minor little repairs and the bottom of the front wing here needs some attention other than that it is pretty much sound i've not found any other um rot in the shell whether it will come back from the dippers the same well don't know um but it you can generally see underneath it is extremely sound there's no patches plates nothing so there's no if if there is anything to do on it when it comes back from dippers it's only gonna be minor stuff um so that's we're up to on the tr8s um hopefully very very shortly gonna be able to get back on that and um finish stripping it and get the start on the welding on it um for the rest of the video um we've actually got a little triumph dollar 1850 automatic coming in um a little local car to us and it's coming in for a tune-up so we're gonna do a complete start from scratch um talk you through how and what order to do things in and get it running correctly hopefully as long as it's got nothing wrong with it so it's, it, he'll be here shortly um so once he arrives we'll get set up and we'll start um doing the tune-up on that um because we've been asked to do some sort of actual working footage so we're gonna do a little bit on the little dollar mic for us so we'll see you shortly when the dollar mic arrives right as we said earlier in the video we've got this little dollar 1850 automatic in to do a tune-up on so <clears throat> first thing we've got to do is do a quick visual inspection and um, we have got simon the owner here who wants to learn about how to do it as well so visual inspection we're going to really look this car's already got um solid carburetor mounts so we haven't got to worry about them um as the 1850s do have rubber carburetor mounts and they're prone for cracking and causing air leaks servo hose looks all good no cracks no perishing um again breather hoses all look good and there's no cracking and perishing so there shouldn't be any signs of um any air leaks um the engine itself is nice and dry and there's no major oil leaks um so at this stage um you go ahead and start work on it so it has got electronic electronic ignition simon's already told me that so we haven't got to worry about um points and cleaning them up and setting the gap um which it's not a big deal in any way um if the points did need setting um standard setting on these is 15 thou so the tools you're going to need to set this up what we're going to need going to need a timing gun an airflow meter, set of feeler gauges, some dash pot oil, some carb cleaner, a vernier, which isn't essential, but I use it and I'll show you why in a little while. And we've got some new spark plugs, um, which are the correct ones for the vehicle, which is important. So, the starting point um, where you always start is your ignition system so there's no point even even looking at the carburetors until you know your ignition system is correct you always start with that, that get the timing correct make sure the plugs are good 
um, distributor cap leads, make sure they're all um, as it should be. Then you can start on the carburetors. So what we'll do now is we'll pull all the plugs out of it and have a look at them because um, you can tell a lot from the um, spark plugs about how the engine's running. We'll then bring around TDC and mark the front pulley, get the new plugs in and get the timing um, sorted out for it. So I'll grab my sockets and we'll get the plugs out. Tune. Um, you can use them. Um, I have set them up using color tune before. It is um, good as long as you know what you're looking for. Um, when you use the color tune, um, you want it so that the flame is um, blue with some orange flashes in it. Um, they're okay, um, but they get they set them up. They, they do they do set the engine up fairly well, but at the end of the day, the color tune spark plug it's a universal spark plug, so it's, you're not going to get it set up a hundred percent with that. Um, one of the most important tools that you can use is your eyes and ears. Mm -hmm. um, you you can visibly hear and see what the engine is doing. Um, and again, that's something only experience will yeah. bring. Like the so. timing itself. Um, I mean, I, when I had this originally, I set it to exactly what it said yeah. in the manual. But I used I used yeah. to start there, um, and then one thing I'm not going to do is give away all my secrets on camera. <laughs> um, I then I start with standard timing and I then adjust it to what the engine actually wants. Yeah. Um, it's usually a bit more advanced, um, if I'm honest, but not too much. Mm -hmm. You can go too far and cause pre-ignition. Mm -hmm. so, right, number one spark plug and number two. And they're, to be honest, looking quite lean. Well, that ties in with what I've told you, doesn't it? Yeah, and the ignition timing actually looks... I'm uh, trying to think now. Uh, it looks still a little bit retarded. Mm. You can tell um, from where the colour is on the spark plug, on the earth strap, where the timing is. And the f I'm trying to think, the further round it is, I think is lean. It's always um, retarded. The further that way is advanced. If you look at that one, you can see it clearly. See it clearer. I see. See where the yeah. colour ends. Yeah. You want the colour when you've got the timing set. This is this is race sort of mm -hmm. like um, setups now. Um, I perfect timing is pretty much on the curve, on the curve. yeah mm. um air front actually that's for the front carburetor if you look the back carburetor is actually running completely different the time is still in the same place obviously but they're a different color yeah that's not too far out that's a little bit lean yeah. they're even leaner they're, they're white. white so they're they're, they're really lean yeah yeah so while the plugs are out, uh, I'm not going to get a spanner on that. So, that plug was not mag. We can't put it in gear and turn and rock it, can we?
now so it looks fairly new. I did clean it up in there. Yeah, get rid of a little bit of grease, it won't help. One thing you want to look for as well, the carbon bowl on the top. Yeah. Make sure that that is intact and not cracked or broken. Mm -hmm. Again, you're looking for cracks in the distributor cap, make sure it's all good. So that looks fine. Rotor arm, that's nice and springy. It's clean, no carbon build up on the end of it. And the mechanical advance is nice and it's, it's free. Mm -hmm. Whether it's working correctly or not, we won't know until we run it. But on visual inspection, you'd say, yep, yeah, you're okay to continue. On that now. Uh, let's check which way that goes. Can't work on that many of them. I can't remember which way the engine rotates. So you got before, so the engine goes that way. It should go anti clockwise by looking at that. Yeah, anti-clockwise. So I've unplugged all the leads, just wait no, just double check for the fire in order. Yeah. That's why I put the knot in number one. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Leads are all okay. No corrosion. No perishing. Again, look pretty near. Mm -hmm. So we'll put the new plugs in. We'll start with a fresh set of spark plugs. So the book says on the plug gaps, um, 24 to 26 thou. So I was to set them at 25. Um, never had an issue with them at 25. 24, 25. They're usually close to 25 anyway, out of the box. Yeah, that was bang on 25. That's no, not it's right, slightly loose. Just... I'll go over and do it, it's easier to do it on the vice. All right now, there we go. Give it a little tweak. Yeah, that's how you want it, you want it so it's just nice. There should be friction there. Yeah. Yeah. And that is exactly 25 thousand you yeah. want to fill? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll put just on a bit of copper grease on them. You don't want to put masses amounts on them, just a tiny bit of smear around the threads. Just helps stop with um, any corrosion. I've seen some people talk spark plugs, but to be honest, there's no need to talk. Go too tight, yeah. No, you just do it by feel. You feel that's tightening up now, so you just feel the yeah. washer compressing. That's it. Yeah. That's all it needs. <laughs> Last thing you want to do is pull your threads out your head. <laughs> Because, I mean, a big problem for the cell phone, isn't it? Yep. Some people, I've, I've seen some people say, oh yeah, you can do it on the car, you can helicoil them and everything else. I'm like, no. Mm. No. The only way to fix it properly is pull the head off and do it properly. Mm. Do the time set, because you can have swarf and everything go down into your mm. pistons. 
No matter how hard you try, you're never going to get all that out. So we've got number one. We'll just make sure that's nicely firm and clicked on. Number three. Number four. Number two. A little trapado as well on these. Mm -hmm. I put them in order on here as well. So you've got number one top, yeah. two on the bottom. Just helps you out if you, you know, just like this is something I do. And then on here, I'll put them in order as well. So you've got number one. I must have gone underneath that one already. Number two, number three, and number four. Yeah. That's it. Make sure they're all nice and secure. The core wire is nice and secure. That's it. Okay, we're ready to um, set the timing. Well, we'll have a look, see where it is first. Mm -hmm. 50 was a bit, uh, 10 degrees. Was eight. Yeah. Look at that number one. Okay, if you want to start her up, we'll see where the timing is. Sound is advanced. You're at, you're at 10. So, um, take it up to about 3,000 RPM and hold it there for us, please. Just hold it at 3,000. Yeah, touch, so you, um, you're idling at um, 10 and it's advancing to 26. So that's pretty pretty good. So you can knock her off now, mate. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, I mean, you could advance it a tiny bit more. Not really. Yeah. I mean, anything for uh, 3,000 RPM, anything about 26 to 28 is pretty good. So, um, that's pretty alright. And it's it's an automatic, so you're not going to notice um, a great deal of performance in it anyway. Okay. Alright, next step, we'll take the airbox off and um, have a look at the carbs. important not to mix your dash pots up as well mm -hmm. keep them together as a matched pair and
and check the springs are the same length. So they're not massively different. As long as they're close. What was that? I've never seen anything like that before on one of those. Close enough. Yeah. What we'll do is drain the oil out and just put some fresh in. Right. So what we've done, um, we had to turn the cameras off for a minute uh, just so we could get on with it. Um, we've taken the carburetor dash pots off and checked the heights on the carburetors. Plus, I didn't want to record that bit because I have my own way of setting them up. It's sort of one of my little secrets how I set them up it's my starting bait as my base so i get my word right it's my um base setting for when i set them up so it's my little secret so i didn't want that let that out so we've cleaned the dashboards out put fresh su dashboard oil on them we've synchronized the jets um to where i start them and our next step now is to start it up and synchronize the airflows so to synchronize the airflows you have to disconnect your um, throttles so they work independently because you will never ever set them up with them linked because one car will open the other one so you can't do it so we'll start it up um, it will idle a little bit fast so I've turned the idle up a little bit to start with um, just so I can set the airflows and then we'll start setting the mixtures so Simon if you wanted to spin yeah. it over mate okay. I'll grab my airflow meter So it will idle a little bit fast. Walking up a little bit. They're independent. All right, that one's wide open down at uh, well past 10. That one's under 10. pretty much the same now. It's hunting like it's still really lean. Right, I think we're reaching them up a little bit. One, two, see the RPM going up. Right. 
great. Great. You hear how it instantly smoothed out? That's a long way rich compared to what it was when we started. From where I start, well, from where I set it when we um, done it initially, yeah. Just got a little bit more, see if it wants a bit more. Four. That's four flats from where I initially went. It's instantly smoothed out. So that shows how lean it actually was when, when, we, when we took the car initially. Yeah. So we're now bringing the idle down. Fire a bit. I'm assuming this has still got the valves in the butterflies. Um, yeah. And throttle screws are all the way off. And that's where it's hard. So, uh, personally, what I, not first thing I usually do, well, if I have ever carburetors off, I throw them bloody things in the bin so they're always sticking around. And then um, I throw them in the bin and put solid ones in, so you're using the throttle stops. But they're they're actually working. It's hard on the tiniest bit fast. They are working, but whether they'll stay working or not, I don't know. They're both on five, so they're balanced. What's the idle in that? Yeah, it's the tiniest bit fast. Usually, when about sort of eight to eight fifty, but that's as slow as it's going to get now. It's running right. Um, might be worth putting your butterflies, put the carburetors off, put some solid butterflies in it, and you'll be able to set the idle speed exactly where you want it then. Alright, let's. Smooth. Let's have a listen to the exhaust. So that's the tune up on the um, Blue Dollar Mike all sorted. Um, owner Simon's taken it out for test drive now. Um, I didn't drive it before. Um, we said it was underpowered, um, but automatic Dollar Mikes they do feel a little bit slow and sluggish anyway. Um, but so he's going to go out for a test drive and see if it feels any better um, as he drives the car regularly, he'll know um, and he'll come back and let us know uh, hopefully uh, you guys learnt something on um, how to set up carburetors and where to start and um, how to set these classic cars up um, I'm not going to give um, away all the information I set it to because it is what I set them up to and um, my, one of my little secrets, unfortunately, so please don't ask what I set the timing to and what I set the carburetors to. Um, that's my personal little secret, and they always run really nice afterwards, so that's something I'm not going to give away. But the rest of the knowledge on how, where to start, what to look for, how to set them up initially, um, hopefully you guys find it all useful. Um, so 
we'll end the video there. Um, so I'm just going to come back and let us know how the car went. Um, and I'm fairly confident it's going to be absolutely fine because it sounds totally different and run. You can hear it's running better already. It's running smooth for a start. It's not sat in there on old, on old hunting like it was. So um, please like and subscribe and we'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.